In the previous lecture, we have talked about the laminar flow of Newtonian fluids. Today our focus will be on non-Newtonian fluids. But what's the difference between these fluids? Simply we can say that Newtonian fluids obey Newton's law of viscosity and non-Newtonian do not obey this law. Newtonian fluids are characterized by a constant viscosity mu in a flow field of constant temperature. Typical examples of Newtonian fluids are flows of water and milk. However, many fluids are so-called non-Newtonian fluids. The question is, what makes them different from the Newtonian one? Let's look at a few fluids, which you often see around you. For example, dairy products or personal care products like mascara and baking mix, which you use in your kitchen, are non-Newtonian fluids. Here I have tomato ketchup. When I open this tube, no liquid falls on this table, although gravity is working on the fluid. If I take water, immediately water falls down. Why is tomato ketchup so different from water? Generally we can say that if the relationship between the shear stress and the shear rate is not linear, we speak about non-Newtonian fluids. Let's look at a few often used models to describe the shear stress-shear rate relationship. Let's first draw a line for a Newtonian fluid like water. The second line represents a category of fluids where the apparent viscosity decreases if the shear stress increases. These are the so-called protoplastic or shear thinning fluids. Examples are soups and sauces, but also diluted aqueous polymer solutions. Further we can distinguish the dilatant or shear thickening fluids where the apparent viscosity increases if the shear stress increases. Dilatants are typical observed in fluids with high concentrations of small solid particles suspended in a liquid, for example quicksand. The most used empirical model to describe these fluids is the so-called power law model, where K and N are empirical constants. For shear thinning fluids the value of N is smaller than 1. For Newtonian fluids N is equal to 1 and for shear thickening fluids the value of N is larger than 1. And what about toothpaste and some paints? These fluids are so-called Bingham fluids. They can be characterized by the fact that first a certain yield stress is necessary before they start to flow. After this shear stress, the fluid behaves like a Newtonian fluid. In this model, tau zero is the yield stress. Before this value of the shear stress, the fluid doesn't flow. After this critical value, the fluid starts to flow like a Newtonian fluid. This means that toothpaste only starts to flow if the yield set is higher than the critical value of tau zero. You could wonder when does my Bingham paint starts to drip? That means that the fluid slows, flows slowly downwards along a vertical wall. Can we predict the critical thickness of the paint layer? Roughly you can say that the gravity force acting on the surface should be higher than the yield stress keeping the paint on the wall. So if the thickness is larger than tau zero divided by the product of the density and the gravity, then the paint starts to drip along your wall. So don't make the layer too thick. We have seen in the previous video how we can derive the velocity distribution in the cross section of a tube for a Newtonian fluid. Let's now look how we can derive the velocity curve of a laminar flowing power law fluid through a tube. Think about the polymer solution or emulsion which is pumped through an horizontal pipe with a radius r and a length l. The shear stress distribution for a steady state flow in a horizontal circular tube in terms of the pressure difference radius and tube length is given by the following formula. If we combine this equation with the power law relation, we obtain the following differential equation. After integration and substituting the no-slip boundary condition at the wall, we obtain the velocity distribution of a power law fluid. If we compare this distribution with the parabolic profile of a Newtonian fluid, we see that for a power law fluid with n smaller than 1, the distribution is much flatter. When this velocity distribution is integrated over the cross section of the tube, we obtain the volume flow rate. From pressure drop versus flow rate measurements, we can obtain information about the power law parameters k and n. This equation can be simplified to the Poisson equation for Newtonian fluids when n is 1 and k is equal to the viscosity mu. It's clear that for laminar tube flow the relationship for a Newtonian fluid and a power law fluid is quite different. 
For this reason, it is in practice important to establish if we have to deal with a non-Newtonian fluid. This can be done by characterizing the fluid with a so-called rheometer, like a Gouet rheometer, or a plate-plate rheometer, or a Conan plate rheometer, where we can measure the different fluid properties, including the apparent viscosity, as a function of the shear stress and shear rate. You have to realize that we have shown here a very simple way of describing complex fluids. For those who want to know more about the fascinating world of non-Newtonian fluids, we have selected the following YouTube link. First you see a stirrer in a Newtonian fluid resulting in a vortex in the fluid, and secondly a non-Newtonian viscoelastic fluid which shows not a vortex but the contrary. The fluid climbs upwards along the stirrer as a result of the elastic force in the direction of the stirrer. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and welcome to the beautiful world of non-Newtonian fluids. Goodbye.